the ZOA Morning Show back in the building. You know we got another crazy topic. One that I believe is long overdue and one of the most important topics we've covered. Are y'all ready to do this? I am, but before, you know how we do, before we get into the topic, we got to promote black businesses. Business. Kobe Kaya Coffee. Go to Kobe Kaya. Kobe Kaya Coffee.com. You got the website? Pull that website up. It's a black owned business. Brother put this together, man. A brother put this together. It's like an energy drink. You know what I mean? It's a coffee energy drink with vitamins and all types of stuff. Please support this black owned business. Also, we juice. Now, people have been trying to use the we juice. He has a code for his website to get a 30% discount. The code is we juice. We live. No, it's we live. We love. We juice. Now, we is spelled W-E. And a lot of people are struggling with this right now. Right? <laughs> we live. We love. We juice. Now, the last we is spelled O-U-I after the company. We live, we love, we juice. Get your discount, 30% discount off the juices. All right? Dr. Mark Goulston, just listen. His new book is coming out in October, Talking the Crazy. He'd been here a long time, and he was able to pull a book out of all of the conversations we've had. Anyway, Dr. Mark Goulston, right? Who else we got? Bobby Glanton Smith. Real Men Don't Play. Go get his book, ASAP. What else? Somebody somebody sent me a book. Look at this book. The Vatican, the USA, and Israel in Bible Prophecy. Damn. It looked like a heater right here. I'm definitely going to read this. I don't know who sent it to me. I, it don't it don't look like that. No pictures, Mike. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Um, a friend of ours sent us this book, Man and the Word. Gray A. Yongosi. Go get the book. I ain't ready yet, but go get the book. Let's see what it's about. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Do you understand? Um, also, Arise Hospitality. The Black Staples, they're building a new website. I hear a lot of people are supporting them. Black owned business can get everything Staples can get. Everything Office Max, they got. But they black owned. Black owned. Elephant. Y'all gotta support Elephant. If you like Polo, if you like Banana Republic, J. Crew. Black folks out of New York, cut and tailor this stuff for you. They give you a discount too if you type in Zoe Williams, Zoe what? Zoe Williams sent me, whatever. You get 20% off. Blackmastery.com. Veronica Conway. Neurolinguistic program. Right? Undoes a lot of the Willie Lynch and negative thought processes that plague the black community. Gotta support her. Consciousint.com. That's where you get your Nega shirt. Tony B, tell them about your shirts real quick. You, want, you ain't gonna speak on the mic, look at you. You just ready to sell. The etymological root of the word nigga <laughs> broken down <laughs> in the best way you possibly can. <laughs> Plus the got melanin shirt that breaks down everything about melanin on the back. All that and more. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Conscious Shout yeah. Dot com. Shout out to the Bay Area. You got a lot of followers, a lot of supporters. I was up there all weekend. Thank you, man. Turn me into a celebrity up there, brother. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. <laughs> the resume guru.net. Sister named Faith out of Texas. Yo, y'all got to get at her. She will teach you to get your resume game tight. She is a life skills organization that works with resumes, works with presentation, the whole nine yards. Please support this young lady. Uh, what else we got? Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. The Relationship Dismount on Kindle. Listen. The Relationship Dismount is in L.A. The books are here. 
We're in the process of packaging and mailing out books right now. If you want a physical copy, order it right now at imzowilliams.com. If you want your paperback copy, now's the time to get it. We have very few copies left. imzowilliams.com for the physical copy. But I need y'all to keep us banging on amazon.com, where we were the number one new release for the month of July. Come on, y'all got to get at us right now. Continue to support this movement. All of that is done now. Wait, Wait somebody else. Again, something about the nigga shirt. I like the nigga shirt. You like the nigga shirt. We got to make sure. Can you see that on the camera? They need to be able to see that. Yeah. Uh, and then they break it down on the back. Various ways of using that word in positive ways. Y'all need that shirt. I don't want y'all just rush past the nigga. <laughs> <laughs> don't hey. just... Rush next, next pass. Time, next time you forget me, you wearing the body protector. At the, at the oh, I don't want to oh. wear the body protector. <laughs> and I never boxing. forget you. I'm not <laughs> done. <laughs> Listen, cut his mic off. I'm not done. Let me finish doing what I do. God damn it. Now, uh, I had one more thing to promote. Oh, the music that's playing. That was Truth. Everybody know Truth. You got to go to CD Baby to get that. CD Baby, look up Truth. The album is Balls to the Wall. This record that's playing is called Marching Orders. And then over to Booty Boxing, Boot Camp, Boxing Extraordinaire, Trainer, Kevin Berenger. Kevin, speak on it. Yeah, just go ahead to uh, udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y dot com slash booty boxing and enter the promo code zo what show and that zo what show with spaces in between the words and you can get that for free just for the zo what show there it is now y'all already know what's about to happen when we come back from break topics it's about to get crazy topics questions you see the crew in the building we about to get active we're gonna talk about this thing in 2.2 seconds. Zoe What Morning Show, T-Radio V, Radio NTV. We out. We'll be back in a sec. This is a message from Anonymous. Black people of the United States of America, there is a plot that is being exposed by the powers of the Illuminati to kill blacks in numbers to test your community. Black people, the time is now and you must make a decision for real change to save your children and the future generations. The time is now. You must stop purchasing from corporate brands that do not support your community. Brands like Nike, Adidas, Reebok, etc. Black Americans are spending billions on hair, food, and other products and you are not benefiting from the spending. Ask yourself this. When was the last time Nike or Adidas gave you a job? When was the last time you got a fair wage from any of these industries? The truth is the US government would rather keep you on welfare instead of giving you a fair chance at making a good living. The racist people of America are killing your young people and the sad part of it is we have a black president. We of Anonymous ask that all African Americans show strength in numbers by not purchasing for the industries that we have named. It is time that African Americans put money back into your own community. Show strength in numbers and start household by household. When you stand together and show you're based on the influence that you have on the products of Michael Jordan, Nike, Adidas, MC Donalds, Jack and the Box, Wendy's, Cadillac, Chevrolet, and other corporations the racists that are in power will have to reconsider their position on your purchasing power and rethink the levels of discrimination that they are practicing. They will become fair with job practices. Black people you have to balance the power structure by asserting your power of purchase. Listen to the leaders who guide you. Respect yourselves by standing up to the power and becoming a power. This has been a message by Anonymous. Power to the people. It is time to stand up now and forever. Why is a white guy like me co-hosting a black radio show? I think toxic relationships cause you to take poor care of yourself. That if you can recognize danger, if you can pause, if you can uh, take some breaths, refocus and engage, you might be able to dodge a bullet that you're going to send or coming towards you. One of the things that men don't get is that often women need to vent first to clear their mind.
So, uh, you're going to show that book? Show the book? There you go. Uh, this is my book that's coming out in October. I hope you'll support it. And, uh, it, and then a flashback right to the show. And take a look at this. Okay, enough of that screen. Take because I'm going to take a big gulp with what I'm about to say. Because I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get tarred and feathered here. That was a reach, uh, but all right. Jeff. So, so, the, <laughs> so the topic, uh, I'm just reading what Zoe sent me. Do black lives matter to black people only when white people kill black people? Are white people to be held accountable for all that plagues the black community? So here's the big gulp. Here is something that I think black people could say to black people, but I, as a white person, could never say to a black person. If you are plagued by someone, I could say this to another white person, if you are plagued by someone who uh, tends to play the victim card, tends to not take any responsibility for themselves, and tends to vent at you, here's what you do. And this is a, just a, 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 a taste of what's coming out and talking to crazy. Let them finish, look them straight in the eye, and say, uh, you got to get the tone right. You could say, okay, I understand that's what you think and that's what you feel, so now what? Period. Mm. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then what's going to happen? <laughs> that's different than saying, so what? Because that's inflammatory. So you give them a transition. I, uh, uh, okay, I understand that's what you think and that's what you feel, so now what? And then if they continue to vent, uh, what you can say to them is, I can understand how what you're saying you don't think is your responsibility or your fault, but that doesn't make it my fault or my responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> now, as I said, I couldn't say this to a black person. <laughs> but I might be able to sell that shirt that we saw nice. earlier, yeah, and get myself. But, uh, but, no, but, but I think this, mm. this, this is the universal way to stand up to people that infuriate you with their victimhood. And as soon as they infuriate you, why they get the better of us is because you're trying to keep a lid on wanting to rip their throat out and say, you know, you did this to yourself, you know, <laughs> don't dump it on me, uh, blah, 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 blah. And what happens is you're trying to calm yourself down because they're so frustrating you. But as I said, I could say that to a white person and a black person could say that to another black person. I could not say that to a black person. Wow. Here we go. Wow. You already know. Here, here we go. Today's topic, what is the worth of a black life to black people? Do black lives matter to black people only when white people kill black people? Tough, tough topic. Got to deal with it. Let's, let's get into a couple of questions because let me just say this. Already we got a response from Twitter. Shimmy Hoffa. Not Jimmy Hoffa. Shimmy. <laughs> Shimmy. <laughs> Shimmy Hoffa Shimmy. on Twitter says, <laughs> no, and it's stupid and counterproductive to even suggest it. How so? Phone lines are open, 855-878-4652. Please call us and let us know what you think. If black lives mattered more to the American judicial system, would black lives matter more to black gangs? Ugh. You know, I don't give a damn. I'm going to ask the tough question. I don't give a damn. I'm going to ask the tough question. I want us to have a tough conversation, right? Here we go. If the white supremacist infrastructure of ageism, racism, sexism, and classism, as well as capitalism, respected and valued black lives, would blacks get tougher on black-on-black -black crime? If the overall system... We can argue right now that the system is racist, has been. Right. It's, just, it's just, it's racist. You look at the numbers, you look at what black folk got to do to be quote unquote successful and maintain that success. You look at transgenerational wealth. Come on, there's a system in place that keeps people in particular places. That's, mm -hmm. So I'm saying if that system wasn't there, would black people give more of a fuck about <laughs> <laughs> black lives. That's black why black I love crimes. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> would we care more? I'm just asking. In what ways has the remnants of psychological and physical slavery contributed to the black man and woman's internal levels of self-worth or conversely self-hate? 855-878-4652. Let's have a real conversation. See, 
Shimmy Hoffa Shimmy. Wow. said, no, it's stupid to eat and counterproductive to even suggest it. Why is it counterproductive to sit down and say, do black folk look at black on black crime in the same way they look at the use of the N word? Ooh. How about it? Ooh. You can't say it, but we can. Ooh. You can't kill us, but we can. I'm just asking the question. Ouch. You motherfuckers want to talk about it? Let's talk about it today. Because whether there was a racist situation in place or not, black people do fuck black people over. Well, in business, well. we do kill. There's the yeah. hundreds is going on right now in the hundreds neighborhood. It's going on right now. Chirac. Chirac is going on right now. How do we stand and go, this is an outrage. This is a Travis Shaw mockery. All of these deaths at the hands of white law enforcement. But then we turn around and turn a quiet, blind eye to all of the debauchery we are perpetuating against ourselves. Debauchery, I love that. How, how can we? Barbarism, even. I just want to know. So I'm going to throw it to the panel. We got Bobby G. Bobby G. We got Kevin. We got Dr. Goulston. We got motherfucking Jeff Brown. <laughs> we got Tony B. Conscious. Tony B, Tony B. And we got OG Michael Collier in the Michael building. Collier. Let's have this discussion. Can I say something? Can I say something? I, I, Please I, do. I, I can't start this. I can't. I have to start this show with this, even though it is way off topic. Uh, uh -oh. The one of the I, I went to see 48 now, hours. I yes, I went to see 48 Jesus. hours in Beverly Hills Cop. And I was on the edge of doing stand-up comedy. And then I went to Venice Beach. And I saw this dude light 200 strangers on fucking fire <laughs> in the middle of the day with no microphone. His name is Michael Collier. Is another one of the reasons that I even do stand-up. God bless What's you. What's up, bro? I'm glad you're here. God bless you. Thank um, you, brother. That's apples and bowling balls. Apples and bowling balls. Uh, uh, black folks and black folks killing. There's no such thing as black on black crime. You kill your fucking neighbors. That's what it is. People kill their neighbors. Okay, you kill who you're. You kill who you're next to. Um, the concept of black on black crime cannot. Uh, it's a fallacy, and it cannot be looked at on its own. Like niggas just woke up and said, "You know what? I'm gonna kill some niggas today." Because <laughs> uh, um, that's not what happened. Okay. Uh, the other word for project is experiment. Okay. And you have been put in a Petri dish, and the same thing that happens when you put too many rats together. Wow. If you put too many rats in a bucket, wow. in, a, in, a, in a container, the males will start to physically castrate each other. Wow. This is what has happened. And you cannot wow. look at one without the other. That's why I love this, bro. Context. I love you, man. Bobby. Hey, Jeff, man, much love and respect for you, but I got to challenge that assertion yes, that you just made that uh, you kill in the neighborhood. Uh, there's exceptions to that rule when it comes to us. Uh, you go to any integrated neighborhood and you don't see black folk killing white folks. It don't happen. When we live next to white people, we mind our business, go about our business. Mm -hmm. But when we're congregated as a people, it turns into a shooting gallery. That's just Bobby, do we, we do. respect white people more than we There's respect no blacks? No doubt about it. No question oh, about absolutely. it. Oh, no absolutely. I get my agree with that. Absolutely. No question about it. Now, the root cause of that is another discussion, but when it comes to when we're around white people, the fear is evident. Woo! Well, as far as do, do black people uh, or the black on black crime thing, um, if you want to take this all the way back even to slavery, the first slave, the first legal owned slave in America was owned by a black guy. Mm, name speak on it. Alexander Johnson. And so if you want to take this back, it it's always it's always happened. We was it Alexander Johnson or Jenkins? Johnson. What? <laughs> Alexander Johnson. And uh how did he get the last name Johnson? Oh, he, he, took it. he took it. He's uh Alejandro Alejandro uh mm -hmm. Negro is what is what his name was before they before he took up the the Johnson after his at the <laughs> end of his name, but he uh, he was an indentured servant. He was freed, gave given some land, had indentured servants of his own. Then uh, when slavery became legal in America, the first slave uh, 
the first the first indentured servant who was made a slave because he uh, he basically committed a crime and they made his indentured servitude permanent. This guy Alexander Johnson he bought that slave from him. he bought that slave and basically held him in servitude for the rest of his life. Mm. Damn. So when you when black people and I you know Zoe already know Say I hate it. The, the word black is bullshit. You need to stop calling yourself black. Black is a is a classical term. It means slave. Now, if you want to keep calling yourself that, and you, if you're fine with being a slave, then that's fine. But don't don't go around here complaining about blacks on black on black or white people doing this to black people. Because if you constantly keep calling yourself that, how can you keep saying that the owner keeps beating on his slave? Well, that's what you are. You are his slave, and he has the right to keep beating on you. So, get away from that first. Mike. I'm a black man. I'd like to start there, first <laughs> yeah. of all. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Secondly, you're not, you're not I'd like black. to complain you're not black. about, uh, <laughs> uh, I'd like to complain about this whole like setup <laughs> right here. Um, I was invited to talk about black on black crime. I come in here, the room is majority black. I don't have a microphone, and the white man does. Secondly, <laughs> let me just say, <laughs> if we're going to ever get any of this straight, we got to start by killing all the white people. We got to start there. <laughs> the only thing wrong with this country is there's too many white people. Now, if we can just pull back on the whiteness, we can have a balanced uh, arena to start with. No, let me go plan. Let me go plan. First of all, uh, and doctor, doctor, it's okay. I'm playing with you. Um, <laughs> I think you should no. kill off the ozone layer and have <laughs> us all burn up in the sun. That's <laughs> happening. Already. First of all, yes, I, I do claim to be black. I, will, I love that term. Uh, I yeah. think we all call ourselves whatever works for us. Uh, and all of us can sit here and um, rationalize a reasoning for the etymology of the word that we call ourselves. But who we are is who we are in our hearts, how we stand, how we walk as people. And that is going to be the determination, not the, the little tag that you put on but it. So for mine, and you can call yourself what, whatever you want to be, uh, African king man. Uh, I'm from either. all my people from <laughs> Africa, like I think all people are from Africa. And the very first slave owner was not the indentured servant in America. It was Africans in Africa who made us slaves before we even got here with that shit. But before we go into that, I'm, I let you have your part. Um, let, let me just say this. What I think it is a system, it's been systematically, we've systematically been trained to hate ourselves from day one. People of color. You can go into communities in around the world where everybody's black and the lighter skinned black people will hold sway over the darker skinned black people. I'm in a documentary that Bill Duke did called uh, Dark Girls. And if, if you, re re you review that, you'll see that $60 billion a year is spent, is spent around the world on bleaching creams yeah. because people hate their color so much mm. that they want to lighten themselves up because this world has taught us mm. that white is right mm. and black is not so when we go to the funeral we're gonna wear black when we go to the wedding we're gonna wear white when a bad guy comes in he's riding on a black horse yeah. with a black hat but when a, when a good guy comes in he's wearing all white with the, it's systematic we've been taught to hate ourselves where it needs to all begin to save ourselves is in our families mm. it needs to begin with our family where are the parents is is the question we need to we ask them. We always want to claim everything on the kids. Black mm -hmm. kids in gangs. Black kids got drugs. Black kids killing each other. The kids you ain't shit because the parents ain't shit. You follow oh. a fucked up ass kid Whoa. home and see who the fuck answer the door. I bet you run your ass back to the car. So it's about <laughs> it's about re-educating our people to remind us that yeah. we come from royalty. That we are kings and queens. And when we start loving each other, we'll be so busy lifting each other up, we won't have time to shoot each other down. Go ahead. Yeah. And we got to take a quick break. The Zoe Up Morning Show. I'm about to get you when we I come back. We will you know be that. back. I'm, Yo. About, I'm about to get you when I come back. We'll be back. <laughs> you know. But, um, yeah, it's, a hypo it's hypocrisy. It really is. It's hypocrisy, this whole Black Lives Matter. I look at a lot of black people now. Uh, I equate them to the kid that wants to take his ball home because nobody wants to pick him for their team. And essentially that's what black people who tout these slogans were, nobody cares about us, uh, black lives do matter, uh, I'm, I'm a victim. And that's the, that, that's the position that many blacks have. It's sick, it's pathetic, and it's weak. And it's an embarrassment to me. When I hear black people talk about black lives matter 
and they get out of here in March when they just totally ignore you know, the obvious. It makes me sick. It really does. Over the effectiveness of early childhood programs, we note that these programs not only improve the academic capacities of these children, and, and not only uh, increases their IQ, their intelligence, and their social relations capacities and so forth. It had, they have the long-term benefits of, of course, having those students who've undergone this education as a whole to, uh, to drop out of school at a lower rate than children who've not gone to these programs, to graduate, obviously, at a higher rate, to uh, gain uh, gainful employment at a higher rate. Fewer of them will will uh, be engaged in juvenile delinquency or ultimately grow up to commit crime. Fewer of them will be on the welfare rolls. Fewer of them will really be involved in any kind of criminal activity and so forth. In other words, we find that investment in early childhood programs pays off both academically and socially and pays off in terms of pro-social behavior on the parts of those people who attend those programs. Yet, this government has chosen not to fund or to drastically underfund those early childhood programs. Over 86% of American children from all income groups are educated in the public school system, yet the public schools are failing to educate. Poor teens are four times as likely to have poor basic skills as our teens with family incomes above poverty. Yet we have a nation that does not make a national policy of seeing to it that none of its families fall below the poverty line. A negative income tax or other kinds of policies could be used so that we could ensure that no family in the society falls below the poverty level. Yet believing in less than fair capitalism and Reaganite conservatism, we permit this nation, we permitted then the leaders of this nation to uh, project a careless attitude toward the population and therefore abuse our people and create criminality in our people in the name of so called the market economy. Listen, do members of PETA have a stronger love for their animals than Ooh. some black folks Look out. from all walks of life uh -oh. have for black lives in general? Of course. Yeah. Of course. I asked that question because I, th I think Malcolm said it. He said, we can't get with other people until we first get right with ourselves. That's it. Look out now. So if we not right with ourselves, how c is it hypocritical to, to, to call out somebody else and say, you wrong for what you do to us when we do the same or maybe even worse. That's a question. Who no. wants to answer it? Dr. G? Nigga, but don't kill a dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you have a show, The Voice of Reason, so let me try and throw some of that in, and then you can push me to the side. You know, uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a saying, familiarity breeds contempt. Mm. And, and one of the reasons familiarity breeds contempt is because you make presumptions that aren't based on anything. <laughs> Now, there's a saying, marriage is presumed dead. It's because you start presuming things about the other person that have nothing to do with them. They have to do with, as Zoe would say, your ideas, your projections. You know, that, that's also why uh, uh, you talk about an integrated community. You, maybe it's out of fear. I don't think it's respect. But, but you don't presume upon whites if you're black the same way you presume upon other blacks. And the problem is we take too many liberties with those presumptions. That's why sometimes people in arranged marriages do okay because you wouldn't presume to assume that the other that you know what the other person's doing. So, so you pause just enough because you, you understand that you could be wrong about what you're thinking. So I'm wondering if familiar, if any of that makes any sense to anybody. Well, it makes plenty of sense. The, the, the issue... You, him, him, the, him. The, I think right. the issue here is that... Um, Black people are somehow, and, and I do not condone black people killing black people, absolutely not. But you cannot use that as license to say that it's okay to kill cop 
for cops to kill black people because mm. black people sadly are not sworn to uphold the safety of each other. Right. The dude in the car is sworn. It is his job. Actually, what we think his job is about us. His job is about protecting commerce. But right. His, right. we right. think he's about us. He's, we, he's supposed to keep this shit straight. Y'all ain't supposed to fuck shit up so that y'all can buy shit. That's yeah. his job. Yeah. But when we say, oh, man, well, uh, since we kill each other, we can't get mad at you killing us. That's bullshit. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Familiarity, breach contempt is based on something. It's based on the presumption of being familiar with that person, you know, and, and because you think you know a person, then you think that you know more than that person. So that's like sometimes people come on and have worked with me as assistants, and they get into the game and want to be my assistant because they want to get into this business, into the industry. Mm. Then they get around me and they see all the things that I do. I've been doing this 30 years, though. They've been here 30 minutes, and they see it, and after about a month or two working with me, now they think they should get the same props that I get, the same respect that I should get, because they think, shit, if he can do this, I can do it because I'm there every day. They don't take into account the 30 years of relationships and knowledge that Come I put on, into bro. it. So Come they on. assume that they know because they think that they know me because they are familiar. So familiarity breeds contempt is based on someone thinking they know more than they actually know. We're not killing each other about familiarity. That's not why we're killing each other. We're killing each other because we've been trained to hate ourselves. We've been trained not to love ourselves and to think that we are the thing that's stopping us. Come on. And because we wow. think that we're the thing wow. that's stopping us, we are physically wow. stopping ourselves. So go. I'm sorry. Um, then Tony. <clears throat> Franz Fanon, who mm -hmm. would have celebrated his 90th birthday, wrote a book called The Wretched of the Earth, and the, the tenet in it is the oppressed take on the worst characteristics of the oppressed soil. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, in a more um, salient mm -hmm. way to mm -hmm. speak on this subject matter, right. it's about perceived value. A white life is perceived to on. be on, of God. more value, and as a result, they get treated accordingly. Mm -hmm. When we look at each other, we don't look at assets. We look at liabilities. And that, and that governs our behavior towards wow. each other, as well as the judicial system, as well as the police department. They look at us as liabilities, and we get treated accordingly. So it goes back to some, many of the points have been made already in terms of how we construct our families and how we treat each other based on value. You don't kill somebody that's worth something. You just don't do it. Ooh, damn. Tony? You just took the vibration right out of my... We're, we're right there. Whoa. Two words. <coughs> Intrinsic <laughs> value. I talk to people about this all the time. Like this weekend I was talking about the nigger shirt. Half the black folks don't even believe that it means God because it can't mean God because they have no intrinsic value value. That's the one thing reparations could never give us back. Mm. When we talk about reparations, once they've taken away mm. your intrinsic value and they make you believe mm. you have never done anything and that you're nothing, no matter what somebody tells you who looks like you, you will never believe that you're anything. Well, um, I just wanted to go back to what Michael had said before. Uh -oh. <laughs> Calling oh, himself uh, black. Shit. You don't look the same color as your shirt to me. That's black. Let you me stay in the sun a little while. I will. You no, know, you won't. Go to Africa. You won't I've seen that. brothers who are this That's black. That's a different type of blue black. black. Blue you're not. Blue you're some not brothers black. that make Jaim oh, and Hansu look like Elder Bar. Yeah. <laughs> what about Indigo? Just a, just a the real color? quick history uh, of why black lives don't matter. It wasn't, has nothing to do with the etymology. They matter. Legally, legally, the term black means that you're not real. If you go to court and you call yourself black, the judge will think that you're saying that you're not real. Now, this goes back to the three types of citizenship that you have in America. There's three okay. types. All right. The first one is the, the aboriginal indigenous people of this land have a certain type of citizenship that, that's away from the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Then there's a second class citizenship of the natural born uh, free citizens that are mentioned in the Constitution. And then there's a third class of citizenship which is uh, put on you by the 14th Amendment. Now, the 14th Amendment citizenship makes you a slave. It literally makes you subject to the jurisdiction of the United States, whereas if you're, a, if you're a different type of citizen, you actually have rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution, whereas a 14th Amendment citizen have rights that are given to them mm. from the Constitution. Like a, like a corporation. Like, uh, exa exactly. The, the U.S. is a corporation. Is that what happened in 1774? 
when they reclassified us in 1774 before well, they, 1776? Well, they had they had been giving you a, t- a title the whole time. So they called you colored, then they called you then they called you Negro, then they, then you became black, then you became African American. These are all titles to keep you in a subjugated state, in right. a subjugated state of mind. And before that, we were called Moors, right? You were called Moors. And then, and then these then are what they, these are what the Aboriginal Americans over here who were here before they called themselves respond. Moors. Oh they called themselves yeah, Delaware. Right. Look I up the Delaware. Wait a minute. Hold up. Look up the Delaware Moors. Look up the Nanticoke Moors. These are the Aboriginal people who were here before all of this. They were all they were free, and they called themselves Moors. That was the last free name that you had on the books before you start calling you something of a different title. Yeah. Okay. If I may suggest in the oh, future. And then Mike. Yes. If I may suggest in the future, uh, uh, that is fantastic, powerful information. And from now on, I will, you know, I already consider myself a dragon more to begin with. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> already, I'm already there. Dragon more. Here's the issue. You need to, you need to do that in the reverse of a joke. See, a joke, you go, you concept, set up, punchline. I need the headline. Okay, because you told us a million fucking names we can't call ourselves without giving us the name that I we just could. Told you. So stop. No, just no, told no, you. no, 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 no. In the future, I'm not talking about the past. I'm in the now. In the future, start that damn story out with you are Moors and that other shit is bullshit. Okay, Mike. Okay, I think the only title that matters is the title that self empowers you. What is the title that empower you? If you feel that you are black and that makes you feel empowered to be the man that you think you are, that is the title that you are. You know, they have taken the word nigga and tried to hold our neck to the ground with it Ooh. by taking this word and trying to make it a negative thing that we Come feel on, bad about. When it but in our community, God. we take it and kick it and spin it and flip it and make it positive in every way. You see that nigga? Woo, that's my nigga. That's a bad that's nigga over nigga there. Right there. But oh, yeah. they want to yeah. disempower us with it. But if we use it to put power in it, then we have changed that word. You can't I put, call you can't myself black, and that makes me feel powerful as a black man. It don't make me feel like a slave or non regal or none of the other bullshit doesn't, that because doesn't matter. I don't accept that, those titles. That it doesn't matters matter. to me. It matters to and, you. And that's what you have to do is live looking, in your looking, individual world you're because looking for it to matter. I am a citizen of this world. Right. But you're you're looking for it to matter from the government to people who you're looking to no, stop I'm whooping your ass. The government. Everybody, right. this is what black, matter lives, black Lives Matter is. I'm trying to matter to black people. Stop the cops off my ass. I think I got it. That's going to be my law. Hey, y'all hear the music. <laughs> when you hear the goddamn music, that mean means go to your corner. <laughs> go to your corner. I, I don't mean cut it immediately. That's right. He said, God damn it, I didn't hear no bell. That's why I kept whooping his ass. <laughs> Shit, I had to jump in here like the referee. I ain't hear no bell. Somebody didn't need to ring a bell. I'm going to whoop his ass too. Hey, <laughs> hey, listen, we about to take a quick break. Quick break. But let me tell you something, something special about to happen. What up? When we come back. We get black. We're going to get a female voice in here. <laughs> Ronnie Khan. Ronnie Khan. Ronnie Khan. Ronnie Khan. Yo, you already know. Hey. 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 We'll be back in 2.2. Do Black Lives Matter to black folks. Right. <laughs> Mayor Burlington, we worked hard uh, to do what we call community policing. What community, what community policing is about is it has, in a sense, it makes police officers part of the community so that they know the names of the people in the community, so the people trust them. So they're out there maybe playing ball with the kids. And when there's a problem in the community, they can go to the police officer. And that's what I would like to see all over this country. So we need efforts to integrate, in a sense, police officers into our community to end this business about police officers being seen as oppressors. We need to help hold police officers accountable when they do illegal behavior, absolutely. And the other thing that we need to do, by the way, which is not talked about, is when you look at a town like Ferguson and everybody focused on police brutality, do you know what African-American youth unemployment in that town is? Somewhere around 50%. And we're going to continue to have problems in this country if millions of kids cannot get jobs, cannot be involved in constructive activity. So all of those things are related. But at the end of the day, we are spending tens and tens of billions of dollars more, more people in jail than any other country. And we're spending huge amounts of money on that. I would much prefer to invest in police training, good training, to invest in education, to invest in jobs for our young people. That is the best way. Okay. 
tolerated it briefly, then sent in the police in the middle of the night and drove them out of town. And that's disappeared from the rhetoric on Martin Luther King Day. So it's, it's okay to condemn a racist sheriff in Alabama, but not us, please. Don't touch our privilege and power. And uh, that's a large part of the background. Uh, these issues are very real. There's more issues here. Racism is a very serious problem in the United States. There's, you know, take a look at the scholarly work on it, say George Fredrickson's uh, study of uh, white supremacy, comparative study. Uh, he, he concludes, I think, plausibly that the white supremacy in the United States was even more extreme and savage than in South Africa. Uh, just think of our own history. You know, our economy, our wealth, our privilege relies very heavily on a century of horrifying slave labor camps. Uh, the cotton, cotton production was not just the fuel of the Industrial Revolution, it was the basis for the, uh, 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 the financial system, the uh, merchant system, commerce, uh, England as well. These were bitter, brutal slave labor camps. There's a recent study by Edward Baptiste which comes out with some startling information. It's called, actually the title is startling, something like, uh, the half was never told which is more or less true, was never told. But Yo, we back in the building. Okay, we're back in the building. A crazy topic. We got a sister's voice in here, because there's a lot of men in here. That's right. Now, you, we, we, need a, we need a sister. And yeah, let me tell you something right now. This is the Barry Bonds of sisters. She coming from the Bay Area. She's swinging for the fences every single time. She's our cleanup hitter. Veronica Conway has just joined the conversation. Hey, I got a hey, question Ronnie. for you, VC. Hey, Ronnie Con. Yep. Is the black hey, man's hey. is is the black man's response, or lack, thereof, or lack thereof, to police brutality or mistreatment of black women a clear sign of our lack of testicular fortitude, right? Testicular. Nut, nut power. Nut yeah. power. Is, it Is it a lack of nut power? Of nut power in the black community. That's the because the brothers, the brothers ain't standing up for the sisters for the sister. who suffer police brutality in the same way that Trayvon Martin, Absolutely. Oscar Grant. Right. Are, do we lack nut juice? Nut juice. Is your scrot <laughs> deficient? Right. Is your deficient? Are we working on half nut <laughs> impulse power? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty! It's a, it's a great, it's a, it's a great question. I'm giving her all I, I got, Captain. Black men have plenty of testicular fortitude. Okay. They just misdirect it into some shit that doesn't necessarily matter. Right. That testicular attitude. Ooh. Wow! <laughs> Damn, Doc! <Ooh. laughs> Too much <laughs> testicular <laughs> attitude <laughs> and not enough Damn. testicular fortitude. Wow! Very Fuck! Wow! So, want to argue that wow. you know i think you have wow. to i think you have to get clear about what black men as a collective are really putting their attention and focus and energy into right, right? because whatever they go into support grows right. and builds and thrives so mm. it's a question of attention where are we directing our attention now i think you know david banner said it best he said that our situation is more psychological, people will admit. Mm. He said black is kill blacks for the same reason cops do. They see no value. So what we are experiencing is, what, you know, white folks have mastered branding, right? They've mastered branding themselves being inherently good and the people being inherently evil. Blackness as a brand actually has no value to to the whole to, to other cult on the planet it has no inherent value and so when we talk about brand and we talk about how we are perceived by ourselves and by everyone else mm. to understand that person is projection and what we perceive is what we project as reality and if you don't believe it, it's the stock market right fortunes are made off based on perception and so we have perception problem and so if everybody perceives us in a negative light 
then we end up living into that negative. Uh, Ronnie, it's Jeff Brown. How are you, love? Hello. Baby. Hey, could you do us a favor? Because you just dropped some knowledge. Man, and I would say we only got about 75% of it because it sounds like you somewhere near solar flares, like you orbiting <laughs> the Earth. In the, you in, you in the spaceship with Ra, the, the spaceship that's on the front of the Earth, Wind, and Fire Gratitude album. Oh, Jesus. So, so hang up and call us back. Cause, oh, okay. Because it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's dropping in and out. Oh, we're going to keep that picture you up. Yeah, I, yes, I, I, I was asking about that. Okay, I'll so, call back. So, so, Doc, while we're waiting for Veronica to call back, Doc, you got something set up for us, correct? Yeah, uh, can you play this uh, video, Chris? So, so, Doc, while we're waiting for Veronica to call back, Doc, you got something set up for us, correct? Okay, so here's the no, it, wear a big wait, hat. Wait, so here's the white man in the studio giving, a, I think, a, a better name for blacks, African American. I think what you should say is, we are not white, because wow. it's a way of standing up for something. So don't presume on us. Don't don't treat us in a certain. We are not white. That doesn't mean we're anti-white. We're just not white. We are who we are, because because it's putting us. You gotta you gotta put a stake in the ground and stand for it. And that's something you could stand well, up for. Well, that's a tough. That's well. I think the reason we're getting treated the way we're getting treated now is cause we ain't white. They know we ain't white. No, they don't no, care no, what no, name. No, no, no. No, but you could we stand call up for white. We're stand not up part for of that tribe called white people. <laughs> then we're gonna be treated differently. <laughs> Okay. No, but there's a way to stand up with pride. Yeah, that's I did a I did a summit with Kevin Powell for the NAACP many years ago, and mm. he said something that brought me to tears. He said, mm. um, "You, no black man in this country, has any idea what a successful black man looks like. Ooh. You are a bastardized version of a successful white man." You have no idea what the king looks like who brings back the huh. elephant to feed wow. the village. You have no idea wow. what the king looks like that, that, that has bamboo in his ears That's for earrings, stuff. which is where earrings come from, that when they swell, he knows to put the rainwater, tells the women to put the rainwater buckets out and catch rain for the whole village. You have no idea what it is like to have a black rite of passage. There is nothing about being black that everybody don't know. And in the words of Mussolini, a nation is only as strong as its secrets. And black people don't have no fucking secrets. We put all mm. our shortcomings to dance music. I guess that's shit why I'm not going to tell you. But but <laughs> <laughs> I got some oh, no. shit I'm not going to tell you. No, but, no, one, no, but one, 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 final, one final word about the not white thing. Because when you mm -hmm. say you're not white, it's something that black people can say to each other and say, stop chasing after the, what the white represent. You're, ne you're never going to have but they're never going to accept you. Just be proud that you're not white. It's, it's not saying but less we'd like to do right. that, and we'd be able to do that if y'all wouldn't keep indoctrinating us in every form of media, talking about how great the whiteness is. People are mad at black folks because they love a black president. We're racist because we love Obama. White folks had 43 of them. They didn't carry them <laughs> on their shoulder like they Jesus Christ. And then black people are proud of a black president, and now it's a racist thing. People said to me, oh, you just love him because he's black. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and why shouldn't I if we finally have a black man in the highest powerful office in politics? But it's because of this whole system of white is right, and if you're black, step back. I didn't vote for Obama because he's black. That's racist. I voted for Obama because I'm black. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to say this, too. I would not just vote for any black man just because he's a black man. I wouldn't vote for Uncle Tom backwards ass Herman Cain. In fact, the name Cain, don't you know, black people read the Bible. We know Cain killed his brother Abel. We saw that son of a bitch coming in the first place. And, and this Uncle Tom being Carson, who's sucking every dick he can to say negative stuff about black people so he could be a Republican, can kiss my ass. I would never vote for him. But if it's a black man who's trying to do a uh, proper things for the whole country. I don't need a black president who's just for black people because we ain't the only motherfuckers here. But I want a black president who represents all people. He getting my vote. That's how I stand. I'm sorry. Well, I just think so-called black kidding. people need to ask themselves what do they really want? If you just want to be happy calling yourself black and being black and proud and it's a good all start. this and that. And it's a good start. 
then you go right ahead and keep on doing that, but don't complain when you get your ass whipped. That's training. I'm telling whip, you yeah. right now, by calling yourself that, that is placing you. But in we a don't state have no slavery. name we can call ourselves just to stop our asses from getting whooped. I just Tell me that you. name. I told you what, what is it was. that? More. <laughs> oh, so more. If we call ourselves more. All yeah. we're gonna do is get our ass kicked more. That's not true. I guarantee at all. you that. Absolutely. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you. I guarantee you, I guarantee you will not. Look, check this out. I got pulled over. I got pulled okay. over by wife. some cops. I want you to listen huh? to that music. Listen, huh? You hear that music? Well, I don't get well, why you, why, 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 well, why you tell me then? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't hear nothing. So. Body protector. <laughs> right. Listen, when we come Body back, <laughs> Kev <laughs> and Bobby going to finish <laughs> their thoughts. Veronica is back with a better connection. Oh, yeah. This shit's turned up right now because this is an important conversation. Right? We'll be back at 2.2, and when we get back, Black on black lives. Black on black crime. Does it matter to black folk when we kill each other? Or does it only matter to black folk when white folk kill us? Somebody call us. 844-855-878-4652. We'll be back. T-Radio, V-Radio, and TV. So what? favorite game on my iPod, mm -hmm. on my iPhone, rather. It is a zombie game where you fly around in a C-130 and you kill zombies at night. The humans have to make it to the shelter, and you have all these guns to kill the zombies. The zombies on this game are represented by little black figures. What? The... <laughs> The survivors <laughs> are represented by white figures. Wow. Um, mm. What's it are, called? Uh, 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 it look called? it up. Look it up. Look it up. I don't know. Look it up. Look it up. Look it up. Quickly, if you had the same uh, 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 name called uh, It's my rant. It's my rant. It's my rant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we are the living dead. We are the zombies that are metaphorically being spoken about. The virus is the thought that you will ever, ever, ever be considered equal by your oppressor. That doesn't make any sense. Stop looking for equality. Equality has nothing, nothing to do with you. When will black people get together? I keep saying it. When the dollar collapses and there is no way for them to separate themselves. Black people do more separating themselves than anybody. As soon as we get some money, we out of the hood. As soon as we get a chance to say, oh, I'm not like, oh, do you have the new Jordans? Because I got them. You don't? Well, you're less than me. We are going to have to get away from that. Before we can expect any respect from anybody else, we're going to have to stop asking the world to be suckers. A sucker, the definition of a sucker is any person, place, or thing that res that. Any person who respects a person, place, or thing more than that person, place, or thing respects itself. If you respect black people from the outside more than they respect themselves, it makes you a sucker. Nobody wants to help you because of that. Respect Talent yourself. is cheap. I'm almost done. Let me know when I'm done. Talent is cheap in the hood. Mm -hmm. That's why we are the hardest to perform for because black people are like the Romans. We either love you or hate you. You can sing, my mama can sing, my uncle can sing, my cousin can sing. You can dance, I can dance, my cousin can dance. You funny, light a joint, nigga. We all funny. So until we can find, again, intrinsic value in ourselves, we're going to have this problem. Last quote, last thing, and I'm done. For I was. Show? Uh, no, no, for the rent. <laughs> for the oh, rent. Well, I can be. I, can, I got other shit to do. I got other shit. Um, I was kidding about voting for Obama because I do not vote. I don't teach you. I do not vote because there is nothing that voting alone or in accompaniment with anything we're doing that's going to stretch over the next 50 years that helps black people. If... Uh, 
If Bernie Sanders gets into office, ask yourself this. If Bernie Sanders gets into office and, and some dude walks in a synagogue and kills nine Jews, do you think that Bernie Sanders will make a statement and don't say shit about anti-Semitism or any other buzzwords that have to do with Jews? Think about that. I'm done. Wow. Please make, make, your, make your thought, Bobby, and then Mike. Well, my, my thought is mainly about... Uh, you know, so-called black people knowing the law. And it doesn't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to call yourself a more, but you definitely need to know the laws that govern the come area on, where on. you live. Right. So you need to know your, your, your vehicle codes of your state, you need to know your government codes of your state. And then when you get pulled over by a police officer, you need to remain as calm as possible and speak what you know. Because when you do that, they have no idea what to do. I was pulled over at, um, at UCLA, we were stopped, I didn't have any uh, actual tags on my place. I had plate. I had sovereign tags. And so the guy, the police officer, he didn't want to let me in my car. Me and my friends, we jumped in the car. He immediately, he called five other cop cars out there to take us out of the car. Now, when they got there and he asked me to get out of the car, I said, I'm getting out of the car out of duress. Once I said that, anything that he made me do that was against the law was null and void. So I got out of the car. He's jacking us up. He, twisting my arm, he get my homie, twisting his arm, he grab my girl by her hair, she's going crazy, and I'm telling her, be calm, calm down, be quiet. She calmed down, now all of us are calm. And as I'm telling him the law, he's not hearing me, but I told him to get his supervisor out there. So they got us all hemmed up. The supervisor got there, a captain, so she starts, she starts saying, well, what are you saying? What do you, I don't understand this. But then I started really hitting her with actual law about her. And so then she said, do you know you have a warrant for driving without a license? I said. I don't know that, that's not, that's not me. So they had me hemmed up with no plates, a warrant, and as I started explaining the law to her how she was in the wrong, I didn't raise my voice one time. They let me go with a warrant, right there. They unhand, they could have just put me in the car and, and took, me into the, took me to the police station. They let me go because I understood the law. And so if you know the law, it's gonna be hard for you to study, but know the law and that, that's where your rights are. In the interim, uh, Chris, can you uh, upload that photo for me? Uh, we are in a state of emergency, and overnight we're not going to be able to, you know, reconstruct our mental capacity. That's what's up. That's a remedy for what ails our community right there. Some you want to know jobs. about perception of value? Every man in that photo made fourteen hundred dollars a week. There's three felons, two murderers in that picture. Fourteen hundred dollars a week for a year. They still working because they went from a situation where they were not in a, an environment where nobody cared about them and actually could do something. The company is Black IPO. You've heard me say many times you can't lead people unless you can feed people. Wendell Stimley took those brothers right there, put them to work right here in Los Angeles, the Martin Luther King Hospital project that he was the manager of, went into the neighborhood, took untrained wow. labor, wow. paid them prevailing wage, nice. and we must replicate that photograph. Come you want to cut mm -hmm. crime, take a person who has nothing to live for and give him something, and give him something to do. Yes. That's right. Exactly. Absolutely right. Wow. Okay, I'm a so-called so-called black man speaking. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to say, That's right. uh, first of all, as so-called black man, white folks don't have to worry what you call them. If you call them white people, they know who the hell you're talking about. We don't have to have no, they don't have no specialized category, but we have to have separate categories. Are we black? Are we African-American? It don't make damn what we call ourselves. We're still going to be treated the same by our oppressors. And overall, and in, in not just, just this country, but in society, people of color feel so oppressed that if you had that same game you talking about and mm -hmm. they just called it killing white people, that shit will sell out in four minutes. And, and if the object is just kill everybody white, everybody white, pow, pow, pow. And not, I, I'm not saying this from a racist stance. No. I am saying this from an oppressive stance. Yes. Because so many people feel that we are where we are because of our white oppressor or, or the people who are in charge, which is called, in general, white people. Not light skin, not pale white, not off, off white, <laughs> just white people. Wait, I, I gotta, I'm getting a little rant going on here. I got you. Uh, it's about <laughs> educating our people, and the education we're supposed to be teaching our people is to love ourselves. No matter what name you call it, it's about us loving ourselves and understanding our worth. And when we understand who we are as a people and love ourselves, we won't be shooting each other down. So what do we do? We got to get in and educate our people. And what I'm doing, personally, 
because I ain't just talking about it, I'm being about it, is we're shooting a film short now in Chicago mm. uh, to help turn around the black on black murders. It's called The Soundtrack of My Life because in Chicago now, police sirens uh, and helicopters is the soundtrack of, of our lives mm. uh, because we are killing each other in such mass numbers. And I keep telling black people, we don't have to kill each other. The way the police are killing us, all we got to do is be patient. And they'll do it for us. But we are killing each other off. So, so far I have Twister, The Brat, Brandy, Dave Hollister, and five other local artists. And Russell Simmons is co-producing it with me. And I'm shooting a film that shows a king and a queen coming from Africa to remind a lost tribe of their heritage and their dignity. That tribe is called the American Blacks. And when they get through with the film, you're going to see us not just putting the guns down. Everybody's doing this for free. But every penny is used to build musical organizations and music studios in Chicago for inner city kids. So when I say put the guns down, I want to walk you over and turn you into a young Jay-Z who started out by selling crack and then started making money. Mm -hmm. Stopped selling crack, didn't make enough money by doing music, so went back to selling crack, then figured out how to make enough money selling music to put crack down. We could take these inner city kids who have nowhere to turn and show them that they have purpose and show them that they are royal and show them how to make money and then we don't have to kill each other because we got something to do besides stand on the corner since all our programs have been ripped out of the schools and the institutions. So it's about us doing something about it, but it starts with us re-educating our children and remind us that we are great people. We're the coldest people on the planet. Everybody want to be black except black people. And it's because we actually <laughs> live the pain of the blackness as well as the joy of it. Mm. White people kill themselves every day. Trying to get what we come back naturally. Shooting shit in they dick, they lip, they ass. They walk, I walk, they grow, I had they do, I rap. Because we some bad motherfuckers. And so right. black people are my favorite people in the whole wide world. And I say it in a room full of white people. And that for me is not racism. Loving no, yourself out loud is not racism. Right. That's called race pride. My mama didn't tell me that I got to hate you to love me. I ain't got right. to hate white folks to love black people. But I better love black people first because that's what I am. But you can call me in that name you want. I'm just so-called black. Mm. <laughs> you're not black. It. You're not yeah. black. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, you hey. Said you got that wait, wait, wait. you ain't black. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's get her back. She's back. Veronica Conway. I know you want to weigh in on what you're hearing because the brothers is in here speaking. Speak on it, Veronica. Yeah. Put that can, you, up, put that can you understand me this time? Yeah. Yes, can we can. Okay. Yes, well, clear. Her picture. It's clear. It's clear. Oh, there's the picture. Um, look, there okay. I'm actually, I'm actually, uh, I, I get what the brother who spoke just said. I think that, um, hmm, let me say it and still be loved. I think that part of one of the issues that we have is our unwillingness to face really our deep desire to give retribution to our oppressor. And mm-hmm. that which we avoid actually ends up running our lives. So if we feel powerless to actually act, especially black men, Mm -hmm. act in a way that would be commensurate with what they've done to us, because we have to go around actively avoiding that and the rage and the anger that that is, I think we take that rage and that anger that really should be reserved for the people that have done this shit to us. And we internalize it and we direct it back towards ourselves. We end up being passive aggressive with the white man and aggressive aggressive with each other <clears throat> yes ma'am uh that's true ronnie that's true if i may say uh um yeah i, I don't think uh, i don't think regular people have a clear view of who is doing this when black people say white people they mean all white people all right. white I people that. I get that. all I get white that. people ain't doing this because the power right. elite don't like white folks that wear plaid either. They don't like if you wear plaid, we ain't talking about you. If you drive to work every day, we ain't talking about you. If your name is on a smock, we not talking about you. We are talking about the power families that run the, the world. Class society. Those are the people. I agree, but can I? Yes, I ma'am. agree, but can I? Can I add something to that? Absolutely. Can I add something to that? Absolutely. Okay. We have to understand, even in the scenario, even in the scenario with police, right? Police come, police salaries come from taxes, right? And so, understand that property ownership is the thing that gives you voice in how your municipalities are run, right? It's what gives you leverage inside of the court and judicial system. And understand too that because the white folks basically 
I mean, even middle class white folks, right, have an impact on how the police actually function in their communities. And so what I'm saying is that if conscious white folks got together and actually decided to do something different, they could collectively, politically change the game of police. Why would they? They choose, they? Not, to, they choose not to for a reason, because they love their fucking white privilege. Exactly. Wow. More than they exactly. love Kennedy. Wow. Mm. Hey, white privilege exactly. is like making $90,000 a year and getting food stamps. Exactly. <laughs> I'm my, not giving up food stamps. My daddy stole this house, and I'm just standing in here behind him licking a lollipop going, ooh, that's bad how y'all got it. Yeah, you and the lollipop, motherfucker. You so listen, it. listen. We got to take a quick break. A break. We coming right back. Coming right show back. is crazy. Crazy. I got a serious question to ask you. Very serious question to ask you. If black lives truly matter, then how come more black babies are aborted in New York City than are even born there? And how come... Thousands of blacks are being slaughtered by other blacks in Chicago and nothing's being done. Very little is being said about it. Let me give you a little background first of all. It's funny that people like to call me a racist and they like to call me a bigot. I grew up in one of the worst ghettos in the former America. I know what it's like to be have people be racist against you. I understand the black man's plight. I was in a neighborhood where it was about maybe less than 1% white. And I got in street fights all the time. I got in all kinds of hassles and tussles all the time. It was my black friends who had my back who would fight side by side with me to get me through being fought against like eight on one, nine on one, 10 on one, even more. And I know what it's like to be the minority. I know what it's like to be the person who you think their life doesn't matter. So that's why I'm asking this question. When you get beyond the spotlights and you get beyond the Al Sharptons and the Barack Obamas and the Eric Holders and everyone else is trying to get out there and make money, trying to have lawsuits, trying to stir up racial tension. Barack Hussein Obama promised to be the most transparent president ever. He promised to heal racial uh, division in this country. He's made things worse than they were in the Jim Crow days. This country, the so-called black leadership, is supporting racism, is pushing it, and trying to start a major race war. And it's shameful. It's disgraceful. I got some news for you. Black lives do matter. So do Asian lives, Hispanic lives, Caucasian lives. All lives matter. doesn't matter who you are or what your background is. But see, for political, for monetary, and for press, and for fame and fortune matters, <coughs> They come up with all these scams about all the <coughs> Black Lives Matters hashtags when right under their noses, blacks are being slaughtered and murdered by the... It's not a reason for a presidential candidate to have to apologize. Apologize? Does anybody take a moment to realize how we look when we force someone to apologize for saying all lives matter? Do you not have any idea how that makes us look? especially when black folks are getting killed by black folks every day. And that's not to say that white folks ain't killing white folks, because that happens too. But black folks are killing black folks every day. And we never heard black lives matter. So what are we saying? That black lives matter only when we're killed by somebody who's not black? Come on now. Come on now. There's a presidential election coming up in a little over a year. Let's keep our eyes on the prize. Focus on issues and stop allowing stuff like this to distract us. All lives do matter. Black plus white plus Hispanic plus Asian plus Native American. All lives do matter. So here we go. You need to do that. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. It's, we got to stop the, the crosstalk. Let's just come back. Focus. A lot of people pissed off Stephen A. Smith because of what he said. I'm one of those people. I want to get you guys' opinion on it. 
But I'm one of those people. And I'll tell you why. He, like Bill Cosby before him, always speak from a pedestal of condescension mm. and from a space that lacks context. The pull yourself up by the bootstraps argument that they always make. After they've made it. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. After you've made it, and there wasn't no fucking guarantee that you was going to make it. Right? You can't write a book that says, I guarantee 100% if you do this shit in America as a black man, you, you will make, meet me here. With your boots <laughs> Right? With boots. So when you come from a tone of condescension. Don't like that. Right? Cover up those goddamn tattoos and put on a suit and act right in front of white folk. What you're actually saying is, Learn how to cope within the system ah, of oppression. Ah, that's that's the only way you will survive, my young nigga. If you want to get to where I am, or at least close, get up here in the massa house. Learn how to survive. Don't learn how to live, nigga, because living is freedom. Surviving is avoiding the trouble. See. That's what niggas teach out here in America. I'm going to yeah. teach you how to learn how to avoid the trouble. Exactly. Police pull you over. There is a prerequisite set of movements one nigga should do right. to avoid some shit happening. Yeah. And that still ain't a guarantee right. that something exactly. ain't going to happen. You just hedging exactly. your bets. You just hedging the bet. So right. exactly. all black life in America, whether you like it or not, exactly. is a form of a coping mechanism. Right. A nigga go down to a school in Alabama, yeah. you better watch your motherfucking mouth, right? You know, when white, when white, my, my, my son got pulled over by the police. Already? Wow. While, while he was in Alabama. Already? Right? Son got pulled over by the police. He just got there. I didn't know nothing about it. Brother didn't text me. Nobody texted me. Nobody told me nothing. Of course, little sister know everything, right? Little sister got all the jewels. Little sister come to me and go, uh, this... News on Snapchat. He put the police on Snapchat. He get pulled over. He's a passenger. He's in the, in the car with somebody else. They speeding. They get pulled over. Mother goes into a panic. Why does mom go into a panic? Because we know what's associated with a black man getting pulled over in, in a South. southern state by a white police officer. Everything about our life in America is a coping mechanism. Right. So many educated black people have said, make sure he, he don't talk crazy because you know he from Inglewood. He from the West Coast. That's Los Angeles. You can't be Los Angeles in Alabama because everybody got coping mechanisms for him as words of wisdom. Yeah. Coping mechanisms as words of wisdom. But we have to teach that. But, but do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm saying this is indicative of black life in America. Uh, no, I, uh, I, I disagree with what we have to teach that. I, what, what, what we should be teaching, mm -hmm. as we, we, we should teach that if we were taught this, what we've been taught for the past 500 years. Right. What we should be teaching is that when you see a black man pulled over and you are black, that is your son, that is your relative. Everybody black, pull over right now. And if you do something foul, to him, you Ooh. and everybody you call Ooh. will have to kill us all. Ooh. Because we, this we is what. That. Yes, we should teach absolutely. That. Because this is the truth. One Coming, time, uh, 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 almost done. Almost done. But, this I know you know. We are both from Chicago. Yeah. The only thing that an aggressor respects is equal or greater aggression. Mm -hmm. Okay, appealing to the humanity of an aggressor in Chicago in the seventies will get your fucking lunch money took. Right. We should teach what you're saying. We should teach that, that we are people and we should stand up for each other. But right now, we're in survival mode. So we need to be teaching youth how to respond when the police come. Wait, I got to say one thing real quick that what's name just did. Tony Terry just got pulled over at 4 in the morning. He just was going to the gym. Police pulled him over. What he did was really smart. He put his phone on 911 
called the police and said, I'm being pulled over and I'm frightened for my life and left it on. The police came up and talked to him ugly and aggressively until they realized they were being listened to wow. on 911 and they changed their tone. So I encourage everyone, when the police pull you over, get your shit on 911 yeah. and sit that on the seat for yeah. some protection because they can adjust them cameras. Don't be fooled What you that. just said was you just, what you just said? Was that uh, uh, Tony Terry smartly called for humane brotherhood right. from other humans? Right. Right. The humane that. brotherhood oh. that other humans need should Him? come from they black need. people. Black yeah. people need to start looking out for black people, but we can't exactly. do that until the dollar crashes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you said something. I want to make two very quick points. The first one is um, you mentioned Alabama. L.A. is like Johannesburg, just like it's just like Auburn, Come Alabama. On. Come on. They don't make no distinction. You leave outside of your community, your immediate neighborhood is just like Alabama, right, right here in California. The other point, uh, I did a piece on Facebook where I said, let's deal with what Stephen A. Smith said in totality. Everybody went right to the part where they saw me speak about what we need to do responsibly dealing with black on black crime and lump me with Stephen A. Smith. That's not wow. the first time that's done happen. It happens a lot because a lot of times we don't want to have that, that necessary conversation huh. about what we do to each mm. other. I live in a black neighborhood. I deal with me black too. people every day of my life willfully. Me I ain't too. trying to run from us, but I'm not going to ignore what I have to deal with. The police are not my number one priority. I done been in jail and hell, and they both oh, yeah. the same. But what I have to worry about is that young brother that approaches, uh, approaches me in that predatory fashion huh. because I know what his problem is. He don't have nothing to live for. And the first thing I got to do is get his attention and say, hey, man, hold up on that. I might have something for you to do. That's so we right. got to deal with that first and That's foremost. Right. That's right. There you go. Tony? I've been dealing with that Make same it issue on Facebook. Because me and a couple of spiritual people spoke out on the Sandra what, Bland what? thing. Spiritual about, people? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Spiritually conscious revolutionaries oh, talking they about how Sandra wasn't trained like we trained our boys to just chill, take the ticket, and drive the hell off. Get out the situation. Mm -hmm. So now people are attacking me, saying the same thing, trying to call me Stephen A. Smith and, <laughs> and, 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 and Stefan from Django. Yeah. When really... We gotta survive. We're First. in survival mode. We gotta live. Survival First. mode is what we're in right now. I don't think anyone is telling you Not to, to, to to walk up to an alligator. If you're if you're accosted by an alligator and you don't have a knife, you have to survive. What, more. what the problem? That's hilarious. I'm sorry. What the what the problem <laughs> is? He's gonna keep going. Is that <laughs> your family knows? that this area is infested with alligators. And whenever they see you in a situation with an alligator, they leave you by yourself. And that is what has to change. When you see a police, I do it now. When I see somebody pull over this black, I pull over, get out of my car, and turn on my fucking phone. And what you, that shouldn't be the fear. The fear in that police officer's mind should be, that's her brother. Yeah. That's her brother. Yeah, that's Veronica. Brother. That's right. Veronica, I need 30 seconds yeah. from you before we go to break. Go. Yeah. So. I hear, I hear what we're saying in terms of how we need to react to our situation, but I think we also have to remember that, I mean, we often coalesce around our pain and not our vision. Ah, and we need to wow, coalesce nice around the wow. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. So at some point, we have to not only be a proactive response to the, to the condition that we're in, but we also have to decide who the hell we're going to be on planet Earth. Mm. Because until we do that, in other words, if we don't have a vision, then what? Somebody showing up paint one for us. That was my okay? point. We ought to be inside of the one that has vision right now because we because of the absence of our own. And so when we unleash real vision in our community, then it's amazing because real vision. Ver Veronica. Veronica. Back on that shit. Yeah, the Veronica. <laughs> Veronica. Yeah. You're breaking up again. We gotta we, we gotta reconnect with you again. But listen, we gotta take a quick break and when we come back, is child support a form of black on black crime? <laughs> I'll be back. We got topics up in here. Fifteen percent of its vote. Here's what that means. What that means is one party, the black black folks in America are telling one party, we don't give a damn about you. They're telling the other party, they're telling the other party, you got our vote. Therefore, you have labeled yourself disenfranchised.
energized because one party knows they got you under their thumb, the other party knows they'll never get you, and nobody comes to address your interest. So my point is, my point is, when you go buy a house, do you look at one? When you are looking for a car, do you look at one? When you want to buy some clothes, when you want to buy some shoes, when you want to buy anything, you're shopping around. You know what you're saying to somebody? Flatter me. What you got? Let me see what you have to offer. We don't do that with politics. And then we blame white America for our disenfranchisement when it is us. Because all we have to do is upset the apple cart by not doing what's predictable and it will force everybody to pay attention to us because the Democrats will be scared of losing our vote. The Republicans will say, wait, wait a minute, we might have, we might have a chance to get it. And then all of a sudden, everybody will cater to our needs just like they cater to Jewish folks, to white folks, and beyond, and suddenly we won't be disenfranchised anymore. I do not understand for the life of me why we as a people don't draw that conclusion and act accordingly. We play right into folks' hands. And I hate the fact that anybody, I don't give a damn Democrat, Independent, Republican, I hate the fact that anybody is allowed to believe that they have a block of people in the palm of their hands. That disgusts me. And that was never good for America. So for $75 million. I call as my first witness. I represent the family now. I call as my first witness. Paul Joseph Watson, police training expert. Mr. Watson, based upon your experience and your observation of the officer, did you form an opinion as to whether he was negligent? Did he violate the accepted standard of care in policing? Absolutely. What is your opinion, Mr. Watson? This is the most negligent, the worst, fine. That's it. Because we have just overcome the slight preponderance of the evidence burden. And we have just won $75 million. That's not criminal. That's civil. So depending upon which forum, and I hate to keep being, I don't want to sound pedantic here. Mm -hmm. But there were wrongdoings. Now, let me ask you, Paul and David, did you see anything that indicated that Mr. Garner was the topic or the subject or the target of prosecution because he was black? Do we know of any? Maybe there was, and we don't know this. Were any racial statements made? Is there anything to indicate that his civil rights, specifically, not that he was arrested, or arrested poorly, but that he was targeted because of his race. Do we have anything? No. Wow. Oh, it's racist. So your pimp game. The whole system is racist. Look at, see, see, see let, me, let me just say this. You know what the knee-jerk re reaction for black people is in America in order to have a better life? Get a good education. That is the basic response. Get a good education. A good education will not protect you from police brutality. It has been proven. Because they will blow out will, the thing you put your education Yes, it in. has been proven that that shit don't protect you. It has been proven for black affluent people, for so-called elite black people, that that elite status you put on your own chest <laughs> right yeah. does not protect you from police brutality sit your boule ass on the curb but do you understand what i'm saying so i think it helps it, it, it might help i think it helps because if you're wait you can need this mic i think it helps because if you're educated you sometime can have a better thinking process and the thinking process is going to help you figure out a way to get out of getting killed when the police come because for me when the police show up it's like baseball everybody just want to get home you want to get home safe. <laughs> <laughs> Even if there's some fouls, you want to get home safe. So no hits, to, no runs, no yeah, errors. Yeah, yeah, so you want to start thinking, how do I get home safe from this situation? Yeah. Not how do I challenge the guy who's got a pistol and a gun. And but, friends but, with pistol but, and a gun. But, but, submission, acquiescence, hmm. 
I agree with you. Yes, it makes you have a cooler head, makes you process and think differently, but it all is a smart way to submit yourself to the authority. Yeah. That's the one thing they do not want black masculinity to ever have without income, uh, uh, without some kind of barrier. The ability to revolt. And guess what? Let me tell you the number one form of revolt. It's not physical. Mm -mm, come on. It's mental. Mm -hmm. It's it. Listen, police are not educated in the law. And then, no, no, they are not. Else. You can no, walk. Listen, not. and what I'm saying is, when <laughs> yes. you have an intelligent conversation with a police officer, especially if he's a white man, and you walk the dog with his mind, he gonna wanna fuck with you just cause you smarter than him. He, yeah. he can see the trajectory of your life is higher than his, and that too may be motivation for him to fuck with you. Bobby? Well, you mentioned revolt, and there's several ways to use that word if you are liberation-oriented. In other words, if I have to submit Ooh. for a moment for my ultimate free freedom, I'm, yeah. give, I'm giving in to that moment because I got more to live for. Then what are you willing to die for? I'm willing to kill and die when they get to the point where I got a chance to do either one with that option being mine, not right. theirs. Wow. Nice. See, wow. Nice. See, we put ourselves in a position where we die over nothing and yeah. nobody yeah. cares. Yeah. Exactly. And I, it I don't, don't make any difference. I don't difference. think it's police or anybody else. I think the bottom line, if anybody is threatening your life, and you and they have the upper hand because they have the weapon oh, yeah, or they have right. the jump on oh, you. Yeah. Then it is wise and I'm otherwise. I'm bowing down. I'm bowing down. That's right. But bow down. I'm, 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 I'm Mac Arthur Jr. because I shall return. There you about go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm coming back shall with my hand, return. You know. yeah. Doctor G. <laughs> I want to run something uh, uh, based on what Jeff said before. Uh, uh, an idea for something. Do you know what Snapchat is? Yep. Yeah. I know Snapchat. Snapchat's like uh, Instagram, but you know you can you can you can you can take a video and you can show it to people. Mm -hmm. Right. What about a snap something called Snapchat Justice that you have a little pen and whenever you're pulled over, it gets broadcast to anyone who looks in at that time. That so like a body cam for you. A body cam for you, That's and anyone who wow. wants to look in, yeah. they Turn watch the, the whole thing. Yeah. The pen now, right now. And then it's broadcast all over the world it's instantaneous. Yeah. Jeff, um, there is plenty of evidence already on video that white folks and p the police system that, that, that the police system ain't shit I don't think that's I don't, I don't think more video is the answer I think the answer comes from finance and how we deal with one another as a group we are black yeah. folks don't do shit yeah. as a group that's the answer that's right. who who here doesn't believe that the police are violent as uh, I'm done Hey, yeah, one, we gotta one, go. One quick we, thing. we we it gotta go. But we, but we gotta go, Bobby. Bobby against his will is of the same opinion still. Thank you, Bobby. Remember that. Thanks. We gotta start listening oh, to the is. rules on this show. God damn it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Jesus, Bobby is wayward today, but we love him. Well, let me just say this. <laughs> we talked about purpose, especially for the black man, purpose. For a lot of black men, life purpose seems like a burden. And I would say this, and this is for anybody. This ain't just for black men, but... Your life purpose will seem like a burden to a uh, psychologically and socially oppressed person, right? It'll seem like a burden, right? It'll seem hard. I think Bruce Lee said, don't wish for an easy life, right? Wish for a harder one so it can develop you and, and cause you to, to, to really take that challenge to rise to the next level. I said in the last show, black people collectively are Lou Alcindor. We are collectively Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yes, we're more talented and the whites are shorter than us. Yes. 
The NCAA said, you know what? The NCAA is a governing body. The NCAA said, no, nigga, no more dunking for you. <laughs> Fuck is wrong with you, seven feet tall, dunking on whiteies. We no, no more. And, and Lou Alcindor was pissed, and he thought it was racist. But it was a white man, a white coach named John Wooden, who said, they don't know, they made you better. They took the dunk away, and now you have to go develop something else. And he developed the sky hook. Ageism, racism, sexism, classism are NCAA sanctions on the black community. Now, collectively, we got to get in the gym and develop a new shot. Develop an, undef an indefensible shot. But as long as you believe ageism, racism, sexism, classism as barriers are insurmountable, you're not going to be able to develop a new shot. You're going to have a built-in excuse for why you shouldn't. You see what I'm saying? You know, well, you, now I have a reason to say fuck it. Mm -hmm. Right? This is why I say life purpose to a psychologically and socially oppressed person feels like a burden. Mm -hmm. Burdens are good. Burdens are made for shoulders that can carry them. If the shoulders are willing. The shoulders are ours. We're the first people on planet Earth. We should be able to handle humanity. <laughs> right? We should be able to handle, we got humanity down better than anybody else. <laughs> we should be able to handle that, right? So what we need to start doing as a solution is we need to start raising life authors, not life assimilators. See, we got life assimilators. Those who are willing to just cope and deal with and tolerate and follow and just get in line. We got them. But now we need life authors. Those who are willing to blaze a trail that will put people in harm's way. I've already said black unity is terrorism in America. Yeah. Yeah. Ask yourself a question. L listen, one point, what, what is this? One point uh, seven trillion dollars a year? especially for 2015, this year, one point. What if black people got together collectively and said, this is what we're going to do with a third of it or half of it. We're going to buy precious metals and set up a black bank that only deals in trading in precious metals. We're talking about rich black. What happened then? What the f do You know what's going to happen? America going to be like, uh, niggas, what the fuck are y'all doing? You niggas want to be the next Gaddafi? Well, you got to kill us all then. This is what I'm saying. Sometimes you got to say, kill us all. It's, 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 it's motherfucking, it's, it's oh, poker. No, it's, no, no, no. hey, here go all my chips. I'm all in. Yeah, I'm all in. All in. Collectively, everybody, all in? They ain't fucking with that. They don't, they don't want that. They ain't fucking with that. They like, we good. You, but you got you to gotta be fearless enough to put them in that position. We so scared, we ain't even bluffing. We, we, we not even, we folding every time. Here you go, nope, too rich for my blood. Ah! <laughs> Fuck that. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no sirree Bob, nigga. Right? <laughs> I'm just saying. Listen, really quickly, they telling me we gotta rap. I had more. But they telling me I gotta rap. So everybody, really quickly, just tell them where you where, where, where they can find you, Bobby. Okay. And Blytheville Art Store, that bookstore, next Saturday. And I want to just close out by giving a shout out to John Jackson and the people in the Virgin Isles. They put on a great show on Bounce TV last night. We got champions coming from the islands. All right, I'm done. Excellent. Yo, you can get at me at uh, the YouTube channel Real Nagas, R E E L N A G A S. And um, you can find all the videos, a lot of the videos we show on here on that channel. Also, the Booty Boxing Home System, Udemy, that's U D E M Y dot com slash Booty Boxing, and the promo code is Zo What Show. Check out my book, Just Listen. I think if, if we listen more than we talk, uh, yeah, I think the world would be better. Uh, thank you so much for the support of Jeff Brown. Dig that. More of those coming. Uh, Jeff's Brownies, the book, out soon. Um, and you can catch me right here next week. Tony, be conscious. Google me or 
ConsciousENT.com. Hit me up. I'm everywhere. Uh, Michael Callier, C O L Y A R. The book is called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the White House. I knocked on the door and a brother answered. And you can reach me at Comic King123 at AOL.com. Comic King123 at AOL.com. I am a black man. And speaking of burdens, I loved Richard Burton. Listen. The Relationship Dismount, I have the physical copies. We are mailing out copies all week. week. So you will be getting your copy if you pre-ordered. If you want to order a copy, go to IamZoWilliams.com. And I also urge you and continue... I urge you to continue to purchase the digital download copy on Amazon.com. I appreciate you all. Please continue to support. We out. 